Hello and welcome to Run Testers. my name is Nick and in this video we're going to be comparing the ASICS Nova Blast 4 and the New Balance Rebel V4. So the Nova Blast and the Rebel are both versatile daily training shoes. The Rebel is pitched slightly more as a speed focused shoe but we've all enjoyed it as a general daily trainer and the Nova Blast is almost a max cushion but still quite lightweight and versatile daily trainer that again we're all quite big fans of. They're very similar in price with the Rebel being £140 or $140 and the Nova Blast 4 being £135 or $140. The Rebel is the lighter shoe, it's 219 grams or 7.7 .7 ounces in a UK 9.5. Whereas the Nova Blast I've got here is a UK 9 and it's still a fair bit heavier. It's 270 grams or 9.5 ounces. We've got a 6mm drop in the Rebel and an 8mm drop in the Nova Blast. The Rebel is the lower stack shoe, which is one of the reasons it's a fair bit lighter. It's 30mm high at the heel, 24mm at the forefoot. Whereas the Nova Blast is 41.5mm at the heel and 335 at the forefoot. Woven Nova Blast, you've got a woven mesh upper, quite a lot of padding around the back of the shoe, not too much on the tongue itself, but really a lot of padding at the back, and then this internal heel counter to add a little bit more structure to the back of the upper. You've got an FF Blast Plus Eco Foam midsole with sidewalls of foam to increase stability. It's obviously a very high stack shoe uh, for a daily trainer, but it's still pretty stable thanks to that design. Then you've got an AHA low rubber outs on the shoe, pretty firm material with all the key impact areas covered there to ensure good durability and grip. With the Rebel V4, you've got a very lightweight mesh upper with a really quite a wide forefoot design here. There's still a little bit of padding around the back of the shoe, despite the fact it is such a lightweight shoe. But overall, it's an upper that's built mainly to be light and speedy rather than offer a lot of structure and support. You have a fuel cell midsole, which is a new version of fuel cell for the Rebel V4. It's a blend of PIBA and EVA. It's wider and higher than past Rebel shoes and should have a little bit more softness and bounce uh, compared to the previous versions of fuel cell that haven't used those PIBA foams in there as well. Then it comes to the outsole, you've got pretty good rubber coverage, especially on the forefoot, just a couple of strips at the back. There's quite a bit of exposed foam in the middle of the shoe there, but the key impact areas should be covered. You can really see how wide the Rebel is by looking at the bottom of the shoe. It's you know, comparable or even wider than the Nova Blast, which has a much higher stack, which is one of the big changes to the Rebel V4 to make it a slightly more supportive shoe for longer runs. So in terms of fit, I would say generally it's been pretty good for me on both of these shoes, but I would say that I've had them in different sizes. Now I've had the Nova Blast 4 in a UK size 8. That is my typical running shoe size across most brands. Now the New Balance Rebel V4 was sent to me in a UK 8.5, but actually I think that's kind of worked out for me in the end because I feel like if I'd gone my usual size, it might have been a little bit too snug. So I think there is an argument to say go half size up in the New Balance shoe compared to the Nova Blast 4, which I think fits more true to size for me on my kind of skinnier feet. Another thing I would say, the general fits of the shoes, I think there's some similarities, but obviously you are definitely getting more padding in the Nova Blast 4, whether that's kind of in the general upper, the kind of heel collar compared to the Rebel V4. So if you like something that sits a little bit more snug, hugs a little bit more to your feet, then I think you're gonna get that more on the Nova Blast 4. The Rebel V4 is just a lot thinner, it's a lot lighter, um, and you just kind of notice that in terms of that fit. The kind of lockdown of the tongue and lace is very similar for me. That's what I found. I've had no issues in terms of kind of the kind of heel rub or lockdown at the kind of heel collar as well. So I think you're getting good kind of you know experience there as well. So I think the things for me here is that there may be an argument to go half a size up in the new band shoe. I think if you're looking for a more comfortable, hugging, kind of snug fitting upper in general, then I think you're going to get that more than over Blast 4. But overall, I think the fits for me in my size and the size I've gone for have been absolutely fine. So the fit for me in these two shoes, in the Nova Blast 4, I'm a size eight in the UK. Uh, both of these are size eights in the UK. In the Nova Blast 4, I have no issues at all. I found it very comfortable. There's plenty of space in the forefoot for me. Um, it's not the widest shoe, but I didn't have any issues with it at all. Uh, so I definitely stayed in my size in the Nova Blast 4. The Rebel, I have actually found that in my UK size 8, it's a little bit small uh, and I did get a bit of toe rubbing. I very rarely get that with shoes in my size. Um, so I would size up half a size in the Rebel. I found it to be a very comfortable shoe apart from a bit of toe rubbing uh, on my big toe. But um, yeah, I'd size up half a size in this shoe. 
So it comes to the fit, I had no concerns at all about the ASICS Nose Blast 4, which I have in my normal running shoe size, the same size I use across all ASICS shoes. Yeah, no concerns at all there. I would stick with your normal size with the Nose Blast 4. With the Rebel, I've got a half a size up on my normal size because past Rebels have been quite tight fitting. So I'm a UK 9, which of new, new Balance is a US 9.5. It's a US 10 in the Nova Blast. So sometimes in New Balance shoes, they can come up a little bit short for me, a little bit cramped. So I did end up with a half size up, but actually I don't think I needed to do that. I think I'd probably would have been better off sticking with my normal size because it is quite roomy around the front of the shoe, especially the back of the forefoot. And I have quite a narrow foot. This hasn't been a problem throughout my testing. I found it a comfortable fit, but it's something to look out for if you do have a narrow foot because it is quite a wide upper to go with the wide base of the shoe. So these two shoes are both shoes that I, I really enjoy. I quite like both of these shoes. Uh, I think the, the Nova Blast uh, 4 is probably um, my second favourite version out of the four Nova Blasts that have been created. Um, the thing I like about the most recent Nova Blast is that uh, the new foam in it just feels a little bit more responsive, a little bit poppier, uh, and I found it to be a very enjoyable daily shoe to wear. I've used this shoe quite a bit for... Um, tempo sessions, daily sessions, things like that. And I found it to be really solid shoe for, for those sorts of runs. The Nova Blast 3, I found to be a bit dull, didn't really enjoy it very much uh, and didn't really tend to use it that much for many runs. Um, as a daily shoe, I think that uh, the Nova Blast 3 really didn't really deliver when you were trying to pick up the pace. It wasn't a very versatile shoe. I think the Nova Blast 4 is a lot more versatile than that shoe. Uh, it's a lot more enjoyable to run in. Uh, I find the foam uh, isn't too soft, um, but has you can use it really nicely for easy days. Uh, but also it just has a little bit of energy return in it and works quite well if you need to pick up the pace. It's not as fast as a shoe like the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4, um, but it's still a, quite a nice versatile shoe that I think skews a little bit more towards the slower efforts, but very much enjoy testing the shoe. I think it's a very solid daily shoe now. The new Balance Rebel V4, I haven't used a Rebel since the original. The original Rebel was very, very different than uh, what we've got here. Um, and uh, so when I picked up the shoe, I was quite excited to try it because I've heard some very good things from other run testers as well as other reviewers. Um, and it didn't disappoint. Uh, this shoe is fantastically, it feels very light on the feet. It feels like it's got a lovely bit of turnover. Um, it's quite a subtle shoe. It doesn't feel particularly bouncy for me. It doesn't feel like uh, there's loads of soft midsole in it. It just feels very subtle and comfortable and nice to wear. It's really easy to pick up the pace in this shoe. Um, it's quite comfortable for running slower efforts in as well. Uh, it's just a really nice, solid, um, versatile shoe. Uh, I'd definitely say it's a faster shoe than the Nova Blast 4. I feel I can really pick up the pace in this shoe. Uh, I've been using it um, over the past couple of weeks for some of my faster tempo efforts for uh, Boston Marathon training. Um, and it's great for that. It just really allows you to pick up the pace without being um, too noticeable. In, there's no plate in it or anything like that. So it's just a very comfortable, natural feeling shoe um, that really does allow you to pick up the pace nicely because it just feels so light and nimble when you're out running in it. But also there's, there is quite a lot of midsole foam in here. So it is a really comfortable shoe to wear uh, when you're doing longer runs as well. So really big fan of the, the New, Bal New Balance Rebel V4. I think it's a fantastic shoe. Probably... Uh, might be uh, my pick for best daily shoe of the year. Not sure yet. There's probably a lot more daily shoes to come. But so far, really enjoying the shoe. I think it's a um, fantastic um, option. But I also really like the Nova Blast 4 as well. Uh, the outsole on these shoes, so uh, pretty similar in terms of the grip. Um, I think the grip on the New Balance uh, Rebel V4 is a little bit better. It's a little bit tackier, a little bit stickier. Uh, I've been out running in the wet tonight. It's tipping it down in Brighton um, and I was running on some quite uneven ground. Absolutely fine, had no issues at all. I think it's really good. Uh, no Blast 4, outsoles at fine on this. I've not had any issues. There were some issues with earlier versions of the Nova Blast. Um, I believe the 3, I think, uh, had a bit of a grip issue. Uh, but this, I've had no issues at all. I think it's absolutely fine, but I do prefer the New Balance Rebel V4 outsole. So I've really enjoyed testing both the Rebel V4 and the Asics Nova Blast 4. I think they're both versatile daily trainers that skew towards slightly different ends of the scale. You've got the max cushioned Nova Blast that is very good for easy and long runs in particular. It's a comfortable shoe with that big stack of cushioning underfoot, whereas New Balance is built a little bit more to be a nimble, lightweight speedster. But with the fourth version of the shoe in particular, I do think it now is more of a daily trainer than an out and out speed shoe because of the wide design it can still do fast stuff i've gone down the track in the shoe and enjoyed it but i think you've 
now got that wider, more supportive base, a softer foam, and it is a very versatile daily trainer that actually feels a bit higher stack than it is. Like I know the Novoblast is considerably higher stack, but the Rebel doesn't at all feel like a, a minimalist shoe or a shoe where you're missing out on loads of foam underfoot. It is very comfortable. So I've done a mix of runs in both these shoes, including long runs, workouts, and just kind of general daily training. And like I say, I've enjoyed both of them. The Asics is a bigger shoe and the ride is more rockered. You can feel the higher drop compared to the Novoblast, I would say, and it's not as squishy as either past Novoblast or even actually the Rebel. It's got a slightly firmer feel and a more smooth transition than the Novoblast has sometimes been known for being quite a wobbly and very bouncy and exciting shoe. I think it's been tamed down a little bit with the Novoblast 4, but I do think the ride's actually improved for me compared to past Novoblast because it is now smoother and the rocker is more noticeable for me. New Balance has a slightly flatter ride because of the lower drop there, and you've got a foam that has a bit more bounce than you get from the Novoblast 4. It's definitely lighter on the foot as well than the Novoblast. Like, there is a quite a big difference in weight here, and although the Novoblast doesn't feel very heavy, the New Balance does feel very light, and that helps when you're picking up your feet on short, sharp reps in particular. As I mentioned, it is a much wider shoe than previous versions, and that does give you a really nice supportive feel when you're on long runs, especially long easy runs. And for me, it hasn't really sacrificed the nimbleness and speed of past Rebels, which were a little bit narrower. I think you still get that, but now with a more supportive design for those long runs that make it a more versatile shoe as a daily trainer. So I did a short run where I was wearing both shoes at the same time, and I could really feel the uh, more rocker design of the Asics on that run, and the, certainly the lightness and the nimbleness of the new mallets in comparison to the Asics, which feels just much like a much more substantial shoe on the foot and that's good in a way it gives you that support you've got the extra cushioning there but I don't really feel you lack support and cushioning with the new balance and it is a lot lighter whether or not you feel that the new balance is cushioned enough for those easy runs might depend a little bit on the type of runner you are like i'm a fairly lightweight runner with a low impact shuffling style so maybe i don't need a load of foam underfoot to really protect the legs that well and maybe some people will unlock a little bit more bounce from the nova blast by putting a bit more force into it either by being heavier or with a more uh, impactful running style maybe more of a loping running style but i feel the bounce from the new balance and it feels certainly cushioned enough for me over long distances i've gone up to 15 miles in the shoe very comfortably and would be happy looking at it as a great like marathon racing option if you're not going to use a plated shoe nova blast certainly is cushioned enough for long runs i've enjoyed my long runs in the shoe but actually at times maybe it's a little bit too big i'd say just for easy and short cruises whereas that's never the case in the new balance like it's a wide shoe but it's very light and nimble that said if you are just looking for a shoe purely to use for easy runs and long runs the nova blast extra cushioning and slightly more supportive all-round design i think might give a little edge for lots of people but then the other end of the scale you're certainly going to get more speed out of new balance if you're looking for a daily trainer that can handle those fast sessions okay so into that run test and i'll start by saying that i've enjoyed running in both of these shoes i do think there's some overlap in terms of the types of runs that they can work for but i do think there's some clear differences that alter or kind of influence the experience that you're going to get running in these shoes now first thing i'll talk about i think the key thing here is the weight of these shoes the new balance is significantly lighter than the nova blast for now this isn't a the Nova Blast 4 isn't a kind of chunky, kind of cumbersome shoe to run in, but I do think if you're looking for the light set of the two shoes, then it's the New Balance Rebel V4 that you want. Now, in terms of the ride, I think you're getting bounce there. I think you're getting a nice rocket in both of these shoes, but I do think there's more of a faster kind of racing feel edge to the ride in the um, Rebel V4, where I think that in the Nova Blast 4, I think it has a touch more versatility for me when you, if you want to ease off and run a little bit slower. I still do think... It has that kind of faster edge to it, um, you know, if you do want to run more up tempo in it. But I think if you want to ease off the nature of that midsole, the level of cushioning just makes it a little bit nicer to do that in. I think when I've tried to do that, I tried to go out and ease off in the New Balance Rebel V4. It hasn't really felt like it's wanted me to do that. It's always kind of wanted to get me through up onto my toes. And while I think you get that on the Nova Blast 4, I think it just feels a little bit smoother. A little bit less aggressive for me i think and that's kind of really countered by the fact that the cushioning and the midsole kind of works against it wanting you to do that and also the weight i think i think these are shoes that you can run kind of pretty up tempo in i think if you wanted to race in a shoe you would probably want to do it in the new balance rebel v4 but these are shoes that you can log a lot of time in i just think that if you wanted something that's a little bit more on the versatile side then the nova blast 4 is going to give you a little bit more of that just naturally because of the way that midsole kind of works when you're running a little bit quicker or want to ease off and start to tire outside wise you're getting more material on the nova blast 4s outside the traction and grip side of things absolutely fine on both of these shoes but I think from a kind of durability point of view, you're going to get more life out of the Nova Blast 4. So if that's something you're looking for from your kind of daily trainer, then I think the Nova Blast 4 is going to give you more on that front. I've got more mileage in the Nova Blast 4, but ultimately I'm not seeing terrible wear in my time in the New Balance Rebel V4 so far. 
the kind of rubber coverage is a bit more kind of strategic in terms of what you're getting here on the New Balance shoe, whereas I think there's just, you know, there's more of it on the Nova Blast 4. So from a durability point of view, I think you're probably going to get a little bit more from the Nova Blast 4. But ultimately, I think two kind of very impressive daily trainer shoes, I think daily trainer shoes are slightly built differently, I think can work for the same types of runs or similar types of runs, but I think one shoe works or is a little bit more on the versatile side. I think that would be the Nova Blast 4 for me, where I think the... Rebel V4 definitely has a more faster edge to it and doesn't necessarily want you to ease off, particularly the kind of paces that I'm running. It, it definitely kind of feels focused to giving you kind of run quicker in your kind of daily training runs. So my take on whether you should go for the Asics Nova Blast 4 or the New Balance Rebel V4. Now, my take is these are both very good daily trainers, but if you want one that is going to be better built for faster runs or faster training runs, I would be going for the New Balance Rebel V4. It's lighter, it's got that bounce there, it's got that kind of nice rocker to it, and it just feels nice to run quicker in. No Bass 4 absolutely has it in its wheelhouse to do that as well too, but I think ultimately it's a lot more versatile than the Rebel V4, particularly if you are easing off and wanting to run slower in. It definitely does want you to run quicker in this shoe, but I think because of what you're getting in the midsole, because of what you're getting in terms of that outsole, and the general fit of this shoe, I think you're going to get something that's going to feel more accommodating at a mixture of paces compared to the Rebel V4. I think they're both fantastic shoes. If I had to pick, based on the type of daily trainer I would normally go for, I would be going for the Rebel V4. But I think ultimately, these are two shoes you're not going to really make a mistake going with. I think, as I said, you want that faster daily trainer, speedy daily trainer feel, go for the Rebel V4. If you want that shoe that can give you that as well too, but can let you ease off and feel comfortable to do that and give you a little bit more durability, I think overall, then I would be going for the Nova Blast 4. So the verdict is that I think there's quite a lot of overlap between these two shoes, but at the same time, they are daily trainers that skew at slightly different ends and you could almost pair both of them in a rotation if you like your cushion shoe to still be quite lightweight like the Nova Blast is and you're not going for an all-out max cushion shoe, something like the uh, Asics Gel Nimbus or something like that for your easy runs. Nova Blast is a very accomplished easy run shoe with a bit of versatility at the top end. The New Balance is a very good daily trainer for steady and faster runs and can do those easy runs as well thanks to the more supportive and higher stack design you have with the new model. I certainly prefer the New Balance Rebel as the all-round shoe just because I really like that light design. I find it really comfortable and I certainly find it speedier than the ASIC. So I'd be looking at the New Balance as a very versatile daily trainer and for me I'd probably pick up the Nova Blast more just as a cushion shoe for my rotation if I was going to look at it like that. So if you are just looking for a pure cushion shoe I think the Nova Blast might still edge it but all round, I think the New Balance is the more versatile shoe and the more enjoyable shoe to use for a range of runs. There might be some differences on feeling like that though if you are, like I say, a heavier runner or a newer runner. I think the Nova Blast is a fantastic all rounder shoe that you can use for everything and I like the fact it's a fair bit lighter and more versatile than kind of traditional, very cushioned shoes that are just a bit hefty. You've got that really good rocker on the shoe that does make it a little bit better for speedier runs than most shoes with this amount of cushioning underfoot. But if you are looking for a really versatile shoe in general, I definitely think the Rebel is the more versatile shoe. And I do like the updates to the four in that it does give you that extra comfort and support on long runs just really ticking that box a lot more because with past versions of the rebel i wasn't sure if i really was going to enjoy doing very long runs in them because they just felt a little bit thin underfoot don't get that feeling with the rebel v4 it's comfortable supportive and still a nice sprightly shoe when you are going to run fast so my verdict on these two shoes so i like both of these shoes i think they're both really good daily shoe options uh, i don't think you can really go wrong with either of them i think it really comes down to the um speed that you're wanting to run in these shoes and the types of run that you're trying to do in them uh, i think the noblas 4 is a very solid comfortable um relatively versatile all-rounder that most people would get on with and could use as a shoe that uh, sits in as a daily shoe uh, or somebody who just wants one pair of shoes and maybe is doing all of their runs in it you could probably even comfortably do a marathon in the shoe it's absolutely fine comfortable um, definitely protects the legs over long distance um, and just has a nice bit of cushioning in it um, but when you're doing faster sessions like uh, tempo runs intervals things like that I think the New Balance uh, Rebel V4 really comes into its own. It's just a little bit um, more nimble. It's just a little bit faster. It just feels a little bit leaner on the feet. So I would definitely say that New ba Balance Rebel V4 has just got a bit more to it. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to pick this based on the type of running that I'm doing. I also think that they're both equal when it comes to those easier runs as well. I think the midsole foam in both of these uh, does fantastic job at those comfortable runs recovery runs long runs all those sorts of things but the new balance rebel v4 just skews better towards um running a bit faster in uh, and that's what i want from my daily shoes so i'm going to go for the new balance rebel v4 all the way 
but I still like the uh, Nova Blast uh, 4. That's our comparison of the Nova Blast 4 and the Rebel V4. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.